Hello everyone, now I will show you how to set up your Netgear router, RAX40. And before I start, I want to remind you that if my video will help you, you can buy me a coffee. Half of all coffees I send to animal shelters. All details are in the description down below. So the first thing that you will need to do is to turn on your router. Plug one end of the power adapter into an outlet and the other into the router. Then press the power button. When the router is turned on, the power indicator will be lit. It may take a few minutes for it to completely turn on. Next, plug the cable from your internet service provider or from your modem into a special port. This port is usually labeled as internet and usually it has a different color. Each cable should be inserted until it snaps into place. Now, you need to reset the router to the factory settings. Press and hold the reset button on the router for 10 seconds until the indicator lights on the router begin to flash. Sometimes, the button is located inside the router casing to avoid accidental pressing. In this case, use a thin object to press on it. The router will reboot and the settings will return to the factory defaults. Plug one end of the Ethernet cable provided with the router into one of the LAN ports. And plug the other end of the cable into your computer's Ethernet port. Wait a few minutes for connection. Great, we've connected the router to your computer. Now, you will need to set it up. But first, let me show you another way to connect the router if you do not have an Ethernet cable or your computer does not have an Ethernet port. Connect the router to the power adapter and cable from your Internet provider. This will enable Wi-Fi. If your router is new and hasn't been set up, your Wi-Fi network will be named after the router. Your router has a unique Wi-Fi network name and password printed on a sticker. Connect to it. Great, you've connected to the router. Now let's start setting it up. Open your browser and go to the URL that you see on the screen. Use the address bar instead of the search bar. At the beginning, Click here. Then read Netgear terms and conditions and click I agree button. And click next. Click next again. If your router settings do not look like mine, it means that your router has a different firmware. I recorded a video for each type of firmware. All links are in the description down below. The first thing you need to do is set up a new password. The password for the admin is used to log into the web interface of your router. Pay attention to the password requirements. Write your new password in the first field. Duplicate it in the second field. Next, select two security questions and provide answers. You need them just in case you need to reset the admin password in the future. On this page, you can customize your network name and password. Click Next. If your browser does not redirect after two minutes, reload the page. The following page displays the information required to connect to a Wi-Fi network. If you are connected using the preset Wi-Fi credentials, it's time to connect using the new Wi-Fi credential. If you want, you can print them out. 
Click Next. If the router hasn't been updated in a while, the next page might initiate the firmware update. If the new firmware is not available, click Next. After updating the firmware, you may be redirected to the Netgear website, where you can register your router. You can do it if you want to. I won't do that, so I'll just close this window. Log into the router's web interface again, if you are logged out of it. Enter the standard username admin and password that you created a few minutes ago. Press sign in button. Close this window. At the top right, you can change the router's web interface language. To get the internet, go to Advanced. Set up Wizard. Press No. I want to configure the router myself. Then press Next button. Select the internet settings on the next page. In most cases, there are two options, connection with and without a login. Almost always, your internet connection will not require a login. Check your contract with your internet provider for this information. If your internet connection does not require a login, or you do not know whether it does, select No. Leave account name and domain name unchanged. Select Get Dynamically from ISP in the Internet IP Address section. In Domain Name Server section, choose Get Automatically from ISP also. If your ISP only allows a specific MAC address to connect to the Internet, you need to clone the MAC address of the primary computer. Select Use Default MAC Address if you are not sure about these settings. Check again that your settings are the same as mine. And click Apply. In most of the cases, there is no need to clone the MAC address. But if you can't get an internet connection after the quick setup, later in the video, I'll show you how to clone the MAC address. Now you must reboot the router. To do this, go to the router's web interface if you were logged out of it. Go to Advanced. Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button. And click Yes. After the reboot, wait a few minutes and try to Google something. If it failed, check all of the cables to make sure they are correctly connected. Then log into the router control panel again. Go to Basic, Internet, and choose Use Computer MAC Address. Click Apply button. And then reboot router again. Go to Advanced, Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button and click Yes. After restarting, wait a few minutes and try Googling something. That's all. If my video was useful, please support my work. You can buy me a coffee. I donate 50% of all coffee's purchases to animal shelters. Details can be found in the description below.